Top of the morning to you, or afternoon or evening. My name is Scott, I represent the SLN Game Slam, here with Sergio to bring you the launch of our newest series, Friday Night Rentals. And the spirit behind this series and the inspiration is if you hop in a time machine and think back to when you were a kid, late 90s, early 2000s, you, you weren't able to just jump on YouTube and look up gameplay of certain games. Uh, anything you heard about a game was either word of mouth or maybe from Nintendo Power if you were a subscriber. But the way that my brother and I uh, got to know games before buying them was we rented them. We went to our local video store and uh, for a couple dollars you were able to rent a game for usually five to seven days. And during that time you could make a weekend out of it try out a new game and if you absolutely loved it you would buy that game so the rules for this series is i am going to be sampling games for you games that either i have never played or games that i have not touched in 10 years or more and yes i have games here either that i have owned for that entirety of time and have not played since 2010 or sooner or I also have games that I've picked up that I did rent in my childhood or play at a friend's house and I have not even touched the game for 10 years, but I've got it since. So we're going to enjoy that together and the format of this show is going to be as such. First of all, we take out the game, we show you that we have the game, and we talk a little bit about either where we first heard of the game or uh, where we first played it. If it was played over 10 years ago, what the memory looks like to us. Uh, then what we're gonna do, which is probably for me gonna be the most exciting part, we are going to turn on the game and we being me, you, Sergio, the audience, everybody, we're going to experience the intro sequence to that game together. So you're going to see our reactions uh, you guys will have a uh, digital export of the sequence. We're going to be watching it here on our TV directly, and uh, you're going to see our reactions. After that, what we're going to do is talk a little bit about specific things I remember from when I played the game during my childhood, if it is one that I played before. Uh, and then we're going to wrap it up with a review of the game what the review will be based on is off screen, I'm gonna play two to three hours of the game. I'm not gonna play the whole game because I wanna give a review as if this was from a weekend rental experience. So we're gonna play the game for two or three hours and then we're gonna give a review with the ranking of if we would recommend you buy the game, if we recommend you try the game, or if we recommend, hey, maybe this one stays on the shelf. So without further ado, let's introduce the game. Today's game that we are going to play, I am fired up for it. The game, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you've seen it in the title, uh, unless this is auto-playing, is Mega Man 64. And what I'm so fired up about with this game is I, Kevin and I did not own this game growing up. Uh, but we did for sure rent it. Well, I remember renting it one time. I remember renting it one time, and I also remember one of my friends in elementary school had the game. So I do have some, some vivid memories of the game going into it um, that we will recap after our intro and after the playthrough, uh, but I did want to introduce that, and this is one that's been just staring me in the face every time I look at the label and you see Mega Man without his helmet on. It just reminds me of those memories I had when I was a kid. So I'm excited to play this game. Um, I'm not sure if we'll play through in, in our the entirety of the game. And like I said, with how our rankings will be structured, that's also gonna be for us. Um, if we're not into it after the first two or three hours, we're going to move on to a new game. 
if we're still into it and we're still feeling the story and the gameplay and the music and all of the above, we will finish the game. So, I mean, we got nothing, nothing left for me to ramble on. We're going to jump now into the introduction of Mega Man 64, something I have not seen since at least 2002. So let's dive right in. In a world covered by endless water, people are forced to eke out a living huh. on the small patches of land that remain above the sea. The people of this world rely on ancient technology Different than most driven intros. by quantum refractors, a powerful energy source. These refractors lie in ancient ruins underground and in the sea and are sought some big words in here called diggers these brave explorers are the sole source of refractor energy which has become a cornerstone of the emerging civilization originally this was the diggers only purpose to find refractors so that this civilization isn't might endure at all <laughs> however over the years the story of a fabulous treasure, the legendary hmm. Mother Lode, began to be whispered among the diggers. The Mother Lode, a treasure okay. so great that if it were discovered, it would provide so much power that the world never need fear running out of energy. Hmm. Seeking this Mother Lode, diggers travel from one island to another in their flying machines, ever hoping that they'll find what they seek just over the horizon. Get a little ethical. Hope. Despair. Charity. Greed. Duty. Yeah. Power. I didn't remember this at all. Who can say huh. what truly motivates the diggers? Interesting. So how does this even start? This is not what I expected at all. Not a bad way. Just not, not expected. Very different than the... Dr. Wiley intros we're used to seeing. All right, party people, we are back. Uh, I believe we said we were going to play two to three hours of the game. Uh, we did go a little further than that, more in the six to seven hour range. It's what we do, but uh, we do have a lot of thoughts on the game. We do have a lot of thoughts on the game. Mega Man 64, AKA Mega Man Legends, and we will get into the Legends slash 64 connotation later, but uh, basically what we're going to do is first we're going to talk about the story of the game. What events unfolded in this game? Then we're going to talk about the things we liked about the game, the things we did not like as much about the game, and then finally the long-anticipated ranking. Is this game a buy? Is this game a try? Is this game a why? Is this a game that should have stayed on the shelf? You're going to find out about it starting now. Let's do it, Sergio. So I'll get into whether or not I liked it or what aspects I liked about it later. But for the story itself, in this game, as Mega Man, you are in this world that has been covered by water. Uh, the entire world is underwater and there are different islands. And underground in those islands are what's called the ruins. And so during most of the game, you are exploring the ruins. And on this island where your ship crash lands, there is rumored to be a treasure underneath that island. And because of that, these pirates come in and want to steal the treasure. So you, Mega Man, are tasked with defending the island, keeping its citizens safe, and defeating the pirates. And that's mo that's most of the basis of the game. Um, there is some more that I'll touch on a little bit later, but that is what happens for the most part. You are um, fighting different bosses, different robots that these pirates uh, have created to try to steal the treasure and defeat you. And that's pretty much what's going on. So starting out with things I liked about the game, we gotta start with the nostalgia itself. So I remember, I mentioned the ruins in the story recap. I remember exploring those when I rented the game 
as a kid. And back then, I mean, in the late 90s, you didn't have any new graphics to compare this to. So like this was the pinnacle of video games and I had totally bought into these graphics. I was invested. And when I was a kid, the way I remember it is that I walked through a certain door uh, in the ruins and I thought I found a shortcut to like a later boss in the game. And that, that stuck with me all these years later, is that I, I thought that I found sort of a shortcut to the game. Um, so, so that's one thing I enjoyed was sort of reliving, exploring those ruins because I remember it so fondly as a kid. And another thing I want to bring up is, you know, it, it wasn't perfect by any means, but the villain, um, what's his name, uh, Diesel Bon, um, he's one of the pirates. He, he has a pretty goofy vibe to him. He's got some big like gla like goggles, kind of like tie from Digimon that he has on his head. And he's just like very irrationally confident, even though you keep defeating him as, as Mega Man. So he, I got some serious like Jack Spicer vibes from this guy. Like, me and my posse don't play by the rules. Easy, easy, I can fix this. Hey, give me a week tops. Okay, I'll need more than a week. So, I, I enjoyed that aspect as well. Um, and, and like I said, the, the nostalgia was the biggest piece I enjoyed. Um, we'll get into gameplay for the most part later, but I will say just ringing in some of those memories and getting to take it from left side, right side, whatever side of the brain deals with memories and bring that to life on screen, I did enjoy that. So now to the part of the video where we talk about what we did not like about the game. And I like to keep things positive, but oh boy, these controls were awful. And, and I want to demonstrate a little bit. I have a 64 controller here. We're matching it. Hashtag outfit of the day. And there really is a paradox in how they want you to control uh, Mega Man in this game. You're supposed to aim with the joystick um, once you are locked onto an enemy with Z. So Z trigger, aim with the joystick. Okay, that's all, that's all fine and dandy, but how am I supposed to move Mega Man? Well, the uh, buttons that you can move Mega Man laterally, left and right, are L and R. So you need to have one of your fingers hitting Z again while aiming, while moving Mega Man, and shooting with B or the left C stick. If you're using your special weapon, it's the left C stick. So there's just like so much going on here that it made it very difficult and, and I gotta say borderline unplayable in some of these difficult boss matches where you know what you have to do. You see on the screen what you have to do and you cannot carry out those actions because the controls are so bad. And this brings me to a big point of this review that I learned, frankly. This game was released as Mega Man Legends in 1997 for the PlayStation 1. In the N64 version, there was also a PC version, were ports of that game. And I found that very interesting because I do not know another game in which a title of 64 was assessed to a port. So Mega Man 64 was a port of Mega Man Legends. I found that very fascinating. I don't know any other 64 games in the library that were ports of another game, yet got its own unique 64 title. So I found that very interesting. And I do want to say, we got another little show and tell project here. On the PS1, would have controlled a lot better. Um, I don't know if I'm going to include the footage or not of me playing my initial couple minutes of the game, but I mentioned in there that I thought it would have been better played on the Dreamcast, and I didn't even think of the PS1, because 1997, that might have been Sega Saturn land anyways, but on the PlayStation 1, look at this right here. You got two joysticks. You got one to move Mega Man, 
you got one to aim your gun, your blaster, and you can fire with whatever button it takes. Probably this is special weapon. Perfect for this control. Perfect. And my goodness, on this Trident here, it, it was borderline unplayable, like I said. So that's one downside of the game, and it is a pretty major downside when you're losing to these bosses and it's taking away enjoyment of the game because the controls are bad. So the next thing I wanted to bring up about the game that I did not enjoy was the fact that there is a lot of grinding that goes on. While you are finding these refractor shards, I think that's what they were called, they are pieces kind of uh, of this grand puzzle that will help you unlock the treasure that I mentioned. And in order to unlock those and defeat some of these bosses, you have to upgrade your blaster uh, power, you have to upgrade the frequency of fire in your blaster, you have to upgrade your defenses, and to get those upgrades, you have to collect Zenny. It is the currency of Mega Man. I believe it is also the currency of Dragon Ball Z. So in order to collect Zenny, you have to explore the ruins to grind. And I will say that took away from the experience for me because when I was a kid, I remembered exploring the ruins being so cool, being you're finding things, you're, you're figuring out more of the story, and you're seeing things you don't expect. And as I play through it now, the ruins were just a grind. Uh, like I said, the graphical feel of the ruins were cool, and it was very eerie, but the actual experience of the ruins is just to mine Zenny to upgrade your armor and blaster. So that I was not too keen on. Didn't enjoy the grind while you got these mediocre controls and all that. So last piece I want to talk about was I misremembered a very defining moment of this game from when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I always thought of this game in a different sense than the other Mega Man games because he's not wearing that patented, that staple Mega Man helmet that he has in all the other games. And for whatever reason, I remembered you finding that helmet being a very defining moment of the game. You've basically got the pre-helmet part of the game and the post-helmet part of the game. And so I was really thinking that by exploring the ruins, I was going to find a treasure chest that had this helmet that fit me, the protagonist, perfectly. And I would be able to carry out the rest of this journey, having a complete set of armor, and it was going to be so cool. And instead what happened is, as I mentioned with grinding and mining Zenny to upgrade your armor, you just get to a point where you have enough collected to then turn it in for an armor upgrade that is a helmet. And so you just get enough money and then you have the helmet. And that was a really big letdown for me. I gotta be real because that was one piece that again, I, I hyped it up so much and I remembered as a kid having the helmet, I, again, I misremembered that having the helmet was such a defining point of the game that I was pretty, pretty just, I, I kind of felt flat when it was like, oh, I just pay money for this upgrade. So that was a bummer too. So I want to wrap this all up with our ranking of the game. And based on what I said about what I liked about it and what I disliked about it, you can probably see where I'm going with this. But the first thing I want to mention is that there was mixed reception from this game between those who played it on the N64 and those who played it on the PlayStation 1. It was widely known as an above average game on the PS1, and it was widely known as an average game on the N64. With that being said, we are giving it the moniker of a Y. I, I gotta give it a Y. Because if I gave it a try ranking, I would be saying that through the mystique of the story or the early gameplay or the music, you're really going to get into it. But it was a grind. There were poor controls and the music was not up to par with other Mega Man games. So I really would not recommend this to other people. And I wouldn't really look forward to playing it again myself. And speaking of the story, I, I want to comment on this, because this game essentially has become a cult classic. It's become a game that a small amount of gamers revere it 
as a beloved title in series because there was later a sequel to this game in 2001. But for many others, it's like for me, it's a why. And the reason for that is this, and this is where I really want to make my hard hit, my closing argument, Your Honor. Capcom took a big risk with this game. They took a hard left turn from everything they had built with the NES and the Super Nintendo. There's no Dr. Light, there's no Dr. Wily, there's no Proto Man, there's no Zero, and you know none of the above. And they hatched this completely new story of Mega Man being you know, found by this uh, scientist who's not Dr. Light, uh, who is exploring the underground, and the antagonist is these pirates, and later on, I didn't even go through the whole game, um, but I've been led to believe <laughs> through through what I read that it it gets just crazy. There there's this other uh, android who's from the same maker as Mega Man who wants to eradicate the population. It's very Thanos, like he wants to eradicate the population to start fresh, and it just gets crazy. Like I said, it takes a hard left turn, and it's unlike any other Mega Man game. So I have to give Capcom some credit for having the big cojones to try to pull something off like this. You know, they said, this is the Nintendo 64, okay? We're gonna go big, we're gonna go big, we're gonna try to compete with Mario 64. We're gonna try to compete with Zelda Ocarina of Time. We're gonna try to compete with Banjo-Kazooie. And try they did, but this port of a PlayStation 1 game did not accomplish that for me. And I understand what they were trying to do, but I have to say, as a gamer myself, as someone who grew up with Mega Man 6, although it was extremely hard, I couldn't beat it, um, being someone who loved the 8-bit music of the NES games and just loved the concept, Dr. Wily creates Mega Man to fight Dr. Light. I think if they took that premise and they brought it to this machine, as well as the PlayStation 1, right? Again, it's a port of a PS1 game. If they took that concept and they elaborated that to the three-dimensional gaming world, and you had Mega Man, and you had Zero, and Proto Man, and Dr. W Dr. Light, and Dr. Wily, and you just tweaked it in a way that you could make it a little bit more open world, versus having the separate boss maps, man, sign me up for that game. I would have been all in for that game. I wouldn't have minded grinding to, to um, level up my blaster and armor if I was going after some villains like that. But instead it was kind of these pseudo cartoon character pirates and that didn't do it for me. So that's why I'm giving it a Y rating. I did not expect to give this game a Y rating before playing it and uh, perhaps I set the bar too high with my nostalgia. But that's my thoughts, people. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and we will certainly back, be back with another episode of Friday Night Rentals. So thank you for joining us on this first journey. Leave us feedback, like I said. Sergio and I will see you for the next episode. Game Slam, signing off. Because of, and you can see it on the cover, his hair. His hair, he's not wearing a helmet, right? Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna edit that out a little bit. His hair.